Hey everyone, I wanted to make this uh, quick video to propose a modified theory on how the moon may work. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Droidfield called me and uh, had to tell me about the revelation of St. Hildegard because she described in her revelation how it appeared the moon may work. And I just want to read this clip from her revelation that states, As long as the moon waxes lit by the sun, it receives fire from the stars as well as from the sun. And while it wanes, it infuses its fire into the stars, but not into the sun. For that stands out as it were like a princess. And it is always in only one state. But if the moon is completely full, then it releases its light and transfers it to the stars, and thus the stars become brighter. Now this is really interesting because I... I, I've been really busy in the, in the past couple months. Uh, a lot has changed for me in my personal life, and I haven't had time to keep up with doing moonlight tests. But I did find that sometimes the moon moonlight appeared to have a warming effect, and sometimes it appeared to have a cooling effect. And I was trying to figure out if I was doing something wrong. I was always trying to keep my exposure the same uh, and, and use the same area when I was doing these tests. And I was always using something that was completely vertical to try to block the, the shade or to block the moonlight and create shade so that there wasn't an object over the uh, whatever I was testing to keep heat from escaping. But this may have answered the, the, uh, the question of why this was happening. It may have to do with the phases. So here's the theory. During the waxing phase from new moon to full moon, the moon, as St. Hildegard described, is taking fire or energy from the sun and from the stars. And then that logically would create a cooling moonlight effect. So during the waxing phase of the, phase of the, of the moon, there's a cooling moonlight effect. And then when the moon wanes, when it becomes full and then starts to go back to a new moon, the moon then gives energy to the stars, and the stars become brighter. And then that would also logically create a warming moonlight effect. So keeping track of the phases and the temperature would be a great first step. Now I don't have a lot of time right now to get into this, um, but I do want to start testing this. And she also stated that the moon does not give energy back to the sun as I originally proposed in the first fire and ice theory. I think I was a bit off, and uh, um, some other things led me to believe that as well, but that's spiritual side. I'm not going to get into that. But if you've ever studied the work of Eric Dollard, he believes that the sun get, isn't a limited source of energy. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, anyone out there that knows his work really well, and, it, and it, the energy comes from somewhere else. We don't know where it comes from, or he doesn't know where it comes from. Very interesting stuff that goes along with this theory. So besides testing the temperature of objects exposed to moonlight in the waxing versus the waning phases, we can also compare the brightness of the stars. Are stars brighter during the waning phase than they are during the waxing phase? Uh, when I first uh, heard about this, when I remember Droidfield and I talked about this, I reached out to Alex Carrion. You may know he, he uh, does a lot of... He, uh, uh, Celestial observations. Uh, he, he takes a telescope out and films the moon and the stars, all kinds of stuff. He does great work. And uh, I asked him about it, and he came back with a few pictures, and it says it does appear like the stars are brighter during the waning phase. Really awesome. Now, I haven't really thought about, uh, I haven't really come up with a good way of how we could compare relative brightness because we would have to use pictures and, and set up a camera in the same place and then have the same ambient light. Um, um, there might be better ideas about how to do that. People that are that are that, that film uh, the, the celestial objects more than myself might have a better idea of how to do that as well. But now there's something else we can test. Does this happen? Do the stars get brighter when it's waning? And then do we have cooling moonlight waxing and warming moonlight during waning? Very interesting. And uh, it goes along with the idea that the moon is some type of capacitor, some type of storage device for energy. So it's a system that works a little bit differently than I originally proposed, and uh, that's what we're here to figure out, is how this thing works and what's really going on, if the mainstream belief is not true. So, until next time, 
something to test. I'm hoping to get into this soon, but uh, like I said, I'm pretty busy. Now I'm a married man, so uh, life's changed for me a lot. So, uh, until next time, peace.